So this is the difference between you and a peasant. Hey everyone, I'm Wolf Maiden and today we're making hand-sewn handkerchiefs for general use or use for LARP. Today's video was supposed to be an embroidered handkerchief um, DIY, but um, for the sake of time and for more ease of understanding, I decided to break the two up. I will eventually put out an embroidered one after this, but this will work for general use and even decorative use. This idea is inspired by medieval favors. I like the idea of using something that um, is long gone, but was a part of life for a lot of people. You can use the handkerchief as a prop. It's very useful for kind of just, um, well, Expressing disdain, for example, is a pretty, it's a pretty powerful for that, I think, without even having to do much, you know? So, <laughs> or for use in flirtation, I mean, it's sort of, it's, it's similar to a fan, I think, in that you can kind of hide behind it. And then of course you can actually use it for wiping away sweat. I think it would look cute if you pull it like this and kind of put it in between your belt on at your side so it'll hang down like a triangle. And then you can see what colors you did on the hem and what color you have as your fabric. I think these are also great as gifts, especially in character. If you take the time to sew one of these by hand, and you can sew them with a machine as well, which would make the process much faster, but you can exchange these as a token of esteem, um, as a favor, you know, when you're giving this to somebody to show that you might have a crush on them. So that's my favorite use for these, I think that I'm gonna have, is that I like the idea of gifting these a lot. You know, you bring a couple to a LARP, or maybe one even, and it's, it's just a special thing when you hand somebody a gift like this that's it's made you know by your own hands and it might have some other special significance to it with all of its uses in gifting showing your affiliation um, and for romantic interest um, as well as as a prop or for a functional use I think that handkerchiefs are actually probably like a well, pretty high up there for something that you can make very easily that is unique to you. Nobody's handkerchief is going to be like your handkerchief, whether it's the size that you make it or the way that you stitch it or how you embroider it if you choose to decorate it that way. Additionally, you can also put on appliques or things like that that um, you don't sew or you just want to, you know, put on it without maybe fear of messing it up. Like usual, there are timestamps below. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I went to Joanne's to get everything that I needed for this project. So looking in the fabric aisle, you want to get cotton if you want the most functional, but you can also get a linen or something like that if you'd like. I got fabric quarters. Then getting, then for getting thread, I used embroidery thread. And I also got a hoop, even though I'm not embroidering in this project. Then I have all this fabric, the hoop and the embroidered floss. I picked a bunch of embroidered floss. I'm probably gonna make more than I'm making in this video. So it'll definitely get used. And for later when I do embroider. So today's project, I'm going to be making two handkerchiefs, one with a blanket stitch and one with a straight stitch. So what you need are some of these things. The rotary cutter and mat are optional. So the rotary cutter, the rotary mat, fabric chalk, the scissors, the needle, a ruler, or measuring tape. And so here I'm flattening the fabric. I did wash it, the edge is frayed. I don't know if it's good practice on that. You could also iron this beforehand, which I probably recommend. So yeah, I just measured 12 inches and was going to make a square. 
12 inches on all sides. You can make them a little bit smaller, you can make it larger, that's up to you, however you like, because you are going to fold over the edges and then sew them down like that. So you will lose an inch or two. So then I made a triangle here, making sure that the sides that I measured are facing me, and then I measured to make sure that I had the 12 inches just in case. Then I cut it. This was just a shortcut. You are free to also make a square and just cut it that way. But this for me seemed easier, so I just did it this way. So earlier I talked about um, the difference between you and a peasant. And I think handkerchiefs kind of scream status a little bit, depending. Um, you know, like a peasant might use the sleeve of his arm for sweat, but a noble will use a handkerchief, especially more decorative handkerchiefs. That's not to say that there aren't cloths for working men and women, but that's just the way that I kind of perceive it a little bit. And I think um, historically as well, that was the case. So now what you want to do is fold down the edges. You can iron this, and I will show you that in a second, but what I did, this is the lazy way, still works, it's fine, <laughs> but um, I pinned the edges once I had the fabric down. I did measure to make sure I had the, it folded in as much or as little as I wanted. But yeah, so put a pin through the edges. You can do this and then iron it as well. But here I just pinned it. After I folded it over. And yeah, I pressed it down a lot after I pinned all the corners too. I did I used the ruler and my hand. I didn't see a difference between the two honestly. Um, hand worked just as much as the ruler did, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And here's me ironing the second one. So the second one I did way more correct. I did it the way you're supposed to do it. Um, though I like to kind of do my own thing, so this is me giving you both sides of the uh, spectrum. And so this is me doing something badly. I unraveled the embroidery floss and made a mess. And this is the correct way to do it. I did everything correct in the second one. So you unravel the thread like this, the embroidery floss like this, and it's less messy. So here is where I split the thread. Three thread and then two thread. I was going to use three of the thread from the uh, thread that I cut. And the difference basically is how fine you want your stitches. If you want it finer, you use less thread. If you want it thicker, you use more thread. So I'm using three. I do want to say that this is an optional step. You don't need to divide them if you don't mind how thick the thread is. This is just because I wanted it a little finer. And the way you're supposed to do this is to slowly pull, but I pulled really fast, so again, showing you what not to do. Um, you could also, if it just keeps happening to you or you know you make a mess like I did here, then you can just wind it around the way that would unravel it like this. And that's what I did. At a later point, I did pull the threads just in opposite directions very slowly and it did help. Now threading the needle. A lot of people have a lot of trouble. Um, I did have a lot of trouble, I just didn't want to put it in there. But basically you want the threads to be kind of on top of each other before you pull them, pull them in to the uh, eye of the needle. And so here you pull half of the thread through and half not through and then you even this ends out and then make sure that they, yeah, make sure they're even. And then you tie the end. The red handkerchief, I sewed completely wrong, so let me just say that. But it still worked, it's still fine. I didn't do this for my other thread. And then you cut off um, 
the tail probably leave more than I do here. Maybe like twice as much as I did, but yeah, it worked. And so going back to the red handkerchief because this is the blanket stitch. To start, pull your needle through. I did this on the front. And then I go in a second time. This is to create a loop that goes over. You actually do want it to go over the fabric. And this will achieve that. I'll make a little loop there. The only reason that I am catching the thread is because I want it to be straight and not sideways. And so I put it over my finger to kind of straighten it out as it was going. And then I corrected it a little bit more just because I was scared. But it turned out really well. Pull it tight. And then you should have something that looks like this and like that on the other side. For this stitch, you don't want it too far from the hem, though you can, if you want to, you can. It is for decorative purposes for this especially. You want to space it out however much you want the stitches to be spaced out. So this is all preference. And pull the needle almost all the way through. Make sure that you leave a little space. If you don't, you can just pull it out a little bit more like I'm doing. And then once you have this loop, you take your needle behind and through the loop and then pull it tight. This will create a thread that goes over the top of the hem of the fabric. So the first stitch was how to start it. So this is the regular stitch that you're going to continue to be doing. So first you put your needle through and then when you go back, you want to catch the thread so that you have the space to put a, your needle through the loop in the back and then you pull your needle through and there you go. And you pull it tight again. And you're gonna do that over and over. How, however much down and however far you space them apart is going to make a difference. It can look a little sloppier if you're a little too far off. You can always use like a guide like washi tape or something if that'll help you. I didn't mind the sloppiness. I feel like it adds to it. Um, you know, it's hand sewn. And even when it's done, it looks beautiful, honestly. And here I'm demonstrating again what you want to do on a normal stitch, not the beginning stitch. Sorry, I was holding the camera in my lap also, if you're wondering why it's so shaky and or just not focused on the spot all the time, but I did my best to edit so you could see what I'm doing. And yeah, that's the blanket stitch. I really liked the decorativeness of this. So I guess the only thing that I'm missing here is the final stitch. So I think this got cut off and I can't find the footage for it. So I will link a tutorial for a blanket stitch in my description, but you were supposed to do a normal stitch and then kind of pass it a couple times through to create a knot. I think seeing is much better than hearing a description. So yeah, I'll link that down below. I'm very sorry, I meant for this to be comprehensive. All right, so this is the finished handkerchief. The edge is kind of close up. I think it looks really good. Um, you can kind of see that my spacing is weird and there's a gather there because I pulled too tight, don't pull too tight but it looks good. And so here I'm doing the same thing, measuring. I'm skipping all this because I already explained it. So I measured it and then I ironed it as you saw earlier. And then I pinned it, pinned the edges. And 
This is for the straight stitch. And then I pulled my needle through. I left the little tail. This is the starting stitch as well. So this isn't how you're going to regularly do it. But yeah, once it's all almost all the way through and you leave a loop in the back, when you come back up and you're doing this stitch from right to left as well, by the way, the other one was left to right. So you're pulling this up, this needle up all the way until this part and then you want to pass the needle through the loop here and then tighten it completely. This is how you secure your first stitch. So once that's tightened, you're gonna want and space away. And you want this to be done the same way that I did it, otherwise it'll be on the front of your fabric because there's gonna be two that are together here. But yeah, so then you're just gonna go, a regular stitch, you're just gonna wanna go a certain amount apart, being mindful that the stitches on the back are the blanks on the front vice versa. So it will look like that in the front and this on the back. Wanted to make sure that I kind of got the stitches roughly together but this one was really small. Again doesn't make a huge difference in my opinion um, and like I said the sloppiness I think adds to it a little but you can of course be as careful as you want and practice too, especially with handkerchiefs, because hand sewing, oh, you need, you need practice. So now this is the last stitch. After you finish your last stitch, you take your needle and go under it, and then back through that, kind of create a little knot there, and then you do that again. You go under the same stitch, not the one that you just created, not the loop that you just created, I mean, and then Yep, you tighten it, and there you go. And that will only show up on the back. So, and these are the finished uh, handkerchiefs. As you saw earlier, this was one of my handkerchiefs. I did a blanket stitch on. It's a little messy. I don't think that that's a problem, especially for LARP. Um, and if you're learning like me, um, this is, this is great for a beginner. And then this is my other one. This one is more, it still stands out because I used silver thread, but it's very neutral. You know, if you're not a noble lady and you're just a working woman and you're just tired and you just need to wipe away your sweat or working man, you know, obviously, um, you can also use these to tie around your neck. I'm not going to do that because the mic will die. But <laughs> um, you can do that. You can always use it as a way to get away from the sun. I know it's not pretty, but technically. And you can also, depending on how big your wrist is, reuse these or make these into a functional like type of cloth or warmer. Or just pin this, like I said, you can just pin this if you want to, both sides, I think, and that will work perfectly. But, um, yeah, you, oh, and also, I guess, for some people, these will make a pretty good bib, <laughs> I'm sure. So, and you can wash them, obviously, they're reusable, they're like, and then if you ruin one, again, if you have one that you've just stitched, like I stitched this one, a straight stitch, it's not super, um, it's not super crazy, but it's functional and it does match pretty much anything, you know, this brown. Um, then yeah, you, you can kind of take it around, run around with it, you know, bandage people with it. You know, you can do whatever you want with these freaking handkerchiefs. You can do something like this. It wasn't very tight because I had to do it myself. Um, so it can look very cute. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very versatile, I think. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope it inspires you to maybe make your own handkerchief for your characters. I'm not the best 
at sewing. So of course you could also follow other tutorials for sewing. I think that what I've showed you is pretty functional. I did one kind of a lazier way and one more involved with the iron, using the iron to do that. But uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.